Welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling. We have our last history lesson coming up. That is the history that goes from what we call the Great Moderation to the Great Recession. So we start at the end of the 1970s when the misery index is high. So the end of 1970s, we have this very high misery index. Um, unemployment is was I think about six percent or so, maybe a bit higher, and inflation was push, pushing double digits. Let's say about ten percent. So we had this not very good situation: inflation, employment, inflation, very high. So the short run. So our short-run Phillips curve was in a bad place. Let's say inflation's about 10%. We'd really like it to be down about 2 or 3%. And uh, at the end of the 1970s, uh, the Federal Reserve was given a different mandate, a mandate to bring down the rate of inflation, not worry so much about the rate of unemployment. Uh, Paul Volcker was appointed chairman, and Volcker was an, what's called an inflation hawk, someone who wanted to. He, he, his idea was typically to try to bring the inflation rate down to zero. Of course, when he was in office, it was so far from zero he couldn't get there. You know, he couldn't get there. So what they're doing at the Fed, and or, or in the early 1980s with monetary policy, and again we have not really gone into monetary policy, but they are uh, taking aggregate demand from a point where it's not all that high to begin with, but knocking it back in order to bring down the rate of inflation. <coughs> and so that's what they did. So at first they're moving along the Phillips curve this way, and unemployment rate goes way up. In the early 1980s, it actually reached 10%, which is uh, higher than it is now. Uh, so they really were willing to tolerate a high rate of unemployment, but that gradually knocked the inflation rate down. And then as the inflation rate went down, inflation expectations went down and the Phillips curve gradually shifted and then the economy moved on its own back to lower unemployment. So by reducing aggregate demand they lowered the inflation rate and eventually the natural forces in the economy brought the unemployment rate back down and that was what we call the Great Moderation, because inflation went from 10% down to about, let's say, 2.5%. Unemployment goes from 6 up to 10, so it goes, let's do it, 6 to 10, but then it drifts down Sorry, it drifts down over a period of uh, about 20 years to about 4%. So at first, inflation goes up as they try to cut back. Uh, sorry, at first, the unemployment rate goes up as they try to cut back on inflation. But then gradually, it moves back down. So is the, um, I guess one way to think of it is that we have this, um, this long run aggregate supply. The, uh, the Volcker moves aggregate demand way to the left, which lowers output but brings down the rate of inflation, and then <coughs> gradually, 
the short run aggregate supply curve starts shifting to the right and so we're getting lower prices and higher output and so finally we meet the we meet the long run aggregate supply curve at this very low rate of at a very low rate of inflation and um, and full employment so that was this wonderful period the great moderation uh, and <coughs> it sort of the economy reaches its peak in about early 2000 it was it at that point however aggregate demand I'll do short run aggregate supply. Aggregate demand was very high because of the internet bubble. People thought that that the economy was generating enormous amount of wealth due to the uh, exciting technology of the internet and so the dot-com stocks were valued very highly and that raised aggregate demand but the internet bubble pops in 2000 and as a result aggregate demand shifts down so this is when the bubble pops and so we had a, a bit of a recession in the um, in the early 2000s and in fact if you look at employment rather than output, uh, the recession la was pretty deep and lasted a long time. Uh, then we had recovered, at least in terms of output, not so much in terms of employment. So we recovered from 2003 to 2007, and then, but that was in, include that period includes a housing bubble. And then the housing bubble pops two thousand seven two thousand eight financial crisis financial crisis two thousand eight and then we get the uh the steep recession. that follows. And so we're looking something like a 1930s story where aggregate demand has collapsed. Again, this is the conventional interpretation of what went on. Um, I have to admit I don't really buy into that interpretation, but there it is. So there was this collapse of aggregate demand from which we, at, as of this point, this is the uh, fall of 2011, still have not really recovered. So that's why we call this the Great Recession. So that concludes our historical tour using the aggregate supply, aggregate demand, and Phillips curve framework. Um, at some point, uh, probably not the next talk, but at some point I'll try to give some alternative interpretations. But this is the mainstream interpretation using the graphs that we'll be using on the AP exam. Thanks a lot.